I have only ever produced one video game iceberg video for this channel, and that was based on the game that I desperately wanted to see an iceberg video of. Recently, I've gotten into playing the Naughty Dog classic game The Last of Us, and to commemorate my Walking Dead iceberg video hitting 100,000 views, I'm going to be making an iceberg video based on another zombie classic game, The Last of Us. These videos take me a long time to produce, and this one in particular required me to translate a video game iceberg for this that was in Spanish. So if you guys enjoy this video, please do consider subscribing, as it's free and you can always change your mind later. Also, come check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash sailors bounty. But let's get into the iceberg. The top of the iceberg. The top of the iceberg is some of the least obscure facts within the franchise. These are the pieces of lore that are well known to the fanbase and the community. Ellie was not going to appear on the cover of the game. Ellie was originally not meant to appear on the iconic cover of the game. When the game director, Ashley Johnson, was asked about the original decision, they said, I feel like they don't put women on the covers because they're afraid that it won't sell. It's all gamers really know, and I don't want to be sexist by any means, but I get the feeling, generally, that they think the games won't sell as well with a woman on the cover compared to some badass dude on the front. So the original decision for Ellie to not appear on the cover was the belief that back when the game was released, having a female leading character on the cover would detract from the sales of the game. We're obviously very grateful they decided to highlight Ellie front and centre, and now she's even the main character within the second game, and the DLC left behind shared universe with uncharted before i get into this one i would just like to clarify this theory has long since been debunked but in uncharted 3 there's the same album that appears in the opening scenes of the first last of us game however uncharted 4 takes place in 2015 and the last of us starts its story in 2013 so this theory has since been debunked but yes there used to be a fan theory that these were taking place in a shared universe which would have been quite cool had it happened the Last of Us 2 trailer lied to us. In the original trailers for the second installment of the franchise, it was believed and conveyed that us as the player would be switching between Joel and Ellie throughout the course of the game. The original plot for The Last of Us 2 was left largely hidden during the promotional side of the game, and for good reason. I love the character of Joel. I truly believe he is the best character within the franchise. But the act of killing him off in the second installment is so powerful at essentially turning Ellie into the new Joel. But, in accordance to the trailers, they definitely conveyed a completely different playing style than what fans and critics were expecting, which is probably why it was so widely controversial. The less than PG Crash Bandicoot reference. In Eugene's lab in the second game, by lab I mean marijuana farm, you can find some old VHS tapes which he had evidently been watching in his downtime while at the farm. These tapes include Dong of the Wolf and Smash Brandy's Cooch, with the second one evidently being a play on words of the Naughty Dog classic Crash Bandicoot. Joel's dream of becoming a singer and Ellie becoming an astronaut. In the grounded version of the second game, you are greeted to a three minute rendition of Joel singing to Ellie in a typical dad fashion. The music is a much larger element in the second game than the first, despite being highlighted throughout the first, and there are so many scenes within the second game of both Ellie and Joel playing the guitar and singing which is actually interactive. The slightly less known fact is that Ellie is fascinated with the thought of being an astronaut. In the second game, there is a flashback sequence which sees Dol Joel and Ellie exploring a wooded area on her birthday, where Joel shows her a museum with a dinosaur exhibit, but also, more interestingly, a space exhibit. This exhibit contained a spaceship bay, and Ellie and Joel sit in this, where Joel gives Ellie a tape of a space launch, and Ellie begins to live her dream of going to space. Bill. Bill is a character that could be forgotten if you're not truly invested in the game and a true fan. Bill is the character in the first game that you come across after Tess dies, and he's also the person who has rigged all the traps throughout his area of the city. The theory about Bill is actually down to his sexuality. He lived with another man called Frank who hung himself. It's implied that Bill is gay due to the way he refers to Frank. He says that although he once cared about Frank, he decided it would be best to go it alone, fearing for his life and worrying that being around others would get him killed. When Frank becomes infected, he decides to hang himself so he does not turn into a monster. The second layer. We are now going deeper into the iceberg. These are still facts that are easily known, but in this instance they're a little bit more obscure than the facts that previously mentioned. Let's get straight into it. Only women were going to get infected. 
An original concept of The Last of Us, which was originally proposed in 2004, had planned that all women would become infected, and that they were going to be the only people that got infected, and therefore Ellie would be the only woman left in the world. It's no surprise this original concept was scrapped, as it would have been incredibly misogynistic having a game that is solely dedicated to shooting and killing women implied as monsters all throughout. Thank god they changed this, because The Last of Us would have been a very different game if this was the case. Abby was originally thought to be Ellie's mother. As previously said, the original trailers for the second installment were incredibly misleading for what the game actually entailed. So when the game was initially having trailers released, a lot of fans were under the belief that Abby was actually going to be Ellie's mother. Which obviously is not the case, as we now know that Abby was the woman who killed Joel. Why do animals not get infected by the disease? I actually spent a long time researching this very question, looking into forums and researching the science of infectious fungal diseases. Why do animals not get infected by the disease? Well, one forum post argued that humans are probably the most complex organism on the planet, and our brains are not that unlike mycelium, which is the structure of fungus, almost like a brain's neural network, and that these organisms of mycelium are very intelligent, but not in the same way of human intelligence. So in other terms, a human brain is going to be a more likely target for a fungal-based disease, such as the infection in The Last of Us, and this could explain why animals do not get infected within the universe of the game. The 2020 Game Awards The 2020 Game Awards are probably the most controversial instalment that there has ever been, and a lot of the decisions were made that were made were widely scrutinized. The Last of Us 2 is a good game, I would like to clarify this, I love The Last of Us 2, but I wouldn't argue it's a world class game like the first. The main question is though, how did this game win Game of the Year? Particularly when Ghost of Tsushima absolutely smashed the public vote by a landslide. This called into question that the 2020 Game Awards were actually rigged. Now, there's absolutely no public proof to this matter, and people from the Game Awards team were even publicly saying there is absolutely no element of bias within the awards, but that this kind of controversy would always exist embedded into the culture. The other issue with the Game Awards was that Naughty Dog used the crunch technique to get the game out. Crunching involves putting immense stress on developers with deadlines, and also having a serious issue in mismanagement, which are both issues that deeply affected the developers for The Last of Us Part 2. The Last of Us Part 2 has since become the most awarded game in history, and even overtook The Witcher 3, which had held the record for five years prior. The third layer. We are now in the third layer. Once again, even more conspicuous facts that most people may not know, and people don't seem to massively know throughout the fan base. but let's get into it. Also, just a reminder, if you are enjoying this video, please do consider subscribing. As a small channel, it really helps me out a lot more than you can imagine. Joel's original death. Joel's death in The Last of Us 2 is brutal, Ellie being forced to watch as Abby hits him in the head repeatedly with a golf club. However, his death was planned to be even more grotesque and gruesome than the death we actually see, which is already hard to watch. This death scene, based on a deep depth post that I found, would have seen Joel's hands chopped off and eventually he would have been beaten to death with a baseball bat, a similar style to Negan killing Glenn in The Walking Dead. This death would have been consider considerably more gruesome, and there is no wonder it was cut that instead of being such a gory death, it was much more of an emotional death. The Rat King. The Last of Us 2 takes place some time after the original game, four years to be exact, which gives the infection time to evolve further. There are different stages of the infection that take years to come to fruition, including clickers, bloaters, shamblers. And the final stage that we have seen so far is the Rat King, when the fungus combines multiple stalkers, runners, and clickers together with a bloater into a singular super infected. These are the toughest enemies we have seen yet, and this is probably not widely known, as a lot of people didn't play after they saw what happened to Joel due to some time difficult story arc. Is Joel a villain? Now this one could well cause a split room. Can Joel be considered a villain in The Last of Us? My argument would be yes, and there are multiple reasons for this. The primary motive being the numerous people Joel kills. Joel kills a considerable amount of people throughout his time in the apocalypse. After losing Sarah, he became a hunter, and he would attack and kill people who are just trying to survive in order to protect himself and Tommy. And then, at the end of the first game, when he kills the surgeons in cold blood. These are both instances where Joel's killing is not actually in self-defense, but rather the purpose of killing. Yes, when he kills the doctors, he is doing so to rescue Ellie. However, he could have just as easily subdued them instead of killing them. Another point is that the Fireflies reckon they can create a cure using Ellie. And because Joel has become attached to Ellie, even now finally realizing he sees her as a daughter, 
he refuses to let her die for the better of mankind. Quite a selfish act in reality. He also tries to offload delivering Ellie to Tommy, knowing full well that doing so may actually end up killing Tommy. There are so many aspects of this theory that suggest Joel is a villain, but I think that's the point. The first game is trying to show that Joel has come to terms with what he did, and the storyline for season two reflects the common recurring line within the first game that luck runs out. And eventually he was caught and someone killed him in revenge. The penultimate layer. When I was writing a script for this video, it became increasingly difficult to find evidence and proof for these facts. So I'm hoping that you guys are enjoying this. These facts were actually very interesting to research. So let's just get straight on into it. The vaccine was not going to work. The vaccine is the main story point for the first game. Joel is delivering Ellie for the sole purpose of making a vaccine to help the infection. But would the vaccine have even worked? You would not be able to mass inoculate the remaining survivors who have been too far gone from the idea of society for far too long. Furthermore, the scientists for the fireflies did not even know how Ellie was able to resist the infection. So chopping her up was going to be their final opportunity to even see if a vaccine was possible. They were working on one in an earlier facility, but they had to evacuate too early before they could finish it. I think a vaccine would have helped individuals like Tess and Sam. However, the overall idea of a vaccine to be used to mass inoculate everyone, it, it never would have worked. There were too many different groups and too many different people who were now fighting against each other that it would just never work and there was no way it would ever be able to return to normality the cause of Ellie's immunity. A lot of people don't actually know why Ellie is immune, and this one took me a while to discover. However, I did discover a theory as to why she is immune in a Reddit post by Pack of Pikachus, and this is what the post theorizes. She isn't really the cause of the immunity. The infection basically fucked up and doesn't want to affect her. It's why she still comes up as infected when the soldiers test her, and why she can breathe in spores all she wants. The infection is there, but it mutated and it isn't doing what it's supposed to do. It's all in the recorders in the hospital. Ellie Scar. This is probably the weirdest fact on this level, but in my, all the promotional work and in the game itself, Ellie actually has a scar on her eyebrow and there is no definitive answer as to why she has this scar. There are so many different thoughts and theories as to how she, how she received the scar. And the couple I read were that she was a C-section birth carried out by a field medic for the fireflies. And likely because the field medic wasn't trained in C-sections, when he was cutting open her mum's stomach, she, he actually nicked her eyebrow. Another one is that she was mouthing off to an authority figure and he slash she hit Ellie with the brunt of their gun. Or my personal favourite, she ran into a table as a toddler. Certainly one of the weirdest theories out there, but it is interesting and it also appeals to heal over as Ellie gets older almost showing the characters grow. Maybe one day we will know more about how she got this scar. The final layer. The moment you have all been waiting for. The final layer. These are the most hidden facts to the franchise fans. And once again, I have really enjoyed researching this. So let's just get straight into it. And remember to subscribe and check out my socials below. Harassment to the Last of Us 2 actors. This is a hard one to talk about, but this is one of the biggest problems that actually affects culture nowadays. Actors who are playing a role who get abused by the fan base for things that happen within the game or the TV show. Laura Bailey, who is the voice actor for Abby, received countless death threats because of her role in the game. I think this highlights an immense problem with today's society, where actors are treated horribly for the roles that they are acting. It's something that needs to stop. The harassment towards these actors became so bad that Naughty Dog had to release a statement surrounding the harassment, and obviously they completely condemned it. Joel and the Smugglers. After the death of Sarah, Joel fell into a very bad way of life. After losing her, him and Tommy find themselves at a triage center where Joel plans on committing Sudoku, but to no avail. Joel had to find something to fight for, and he does. Joel and Tommy survive for years by torturing, deceiving, and killing numerous innocent people. Tommy hated this style of life as a hunter and eventually got fed up and left to join the Fireflies. Joel spent a lot of time alone after this, and eventually met Tess, who introduced him to smuggling in the quarantine zone of Boston. Joel would be smuggling in and out of the quarantine zone for plenty more years until eventually being hired to smuggle Ellie out of the city in 2033. Joel's smuggling time gave him the chance to lose the sense of bloodlust that he had grown to very quickly develop. Yes, he still kills, but nowhere near on the scale he was when he was still with Tommy and he was a hunter. Smuggling gave him the chance to finally grieve his daughter without killing numerous people in cold blood. 
Ellie wasn't the only one immune. Surely Ellie is not the only person who is immune to the affection. Her case is rare, and everyone is shocked whenever she can be seen breathing in sports without a mask, or even having wounds that are infected. But even if her immunity was one in a million chance, given her mother became infected during labor. That still means there would be over 300 people in the US alone who were immune. Obviously, they would either be in hiding, dead, or maybe not even know they were immune. But the overall likelihood of her being the sole person who is immune is incredibly unlikely based on chance. Cordyceps, the infection, exists in real life. The infection in The Last of Us is caused by a fungal species called Cordyceps, and most people do not realize that this infection exists in our world as well. An episode of the BBC documentary Planet Earth, titled Jungle, narrated by David Attenborough, features an infected ant being killed by Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, yeah, as well as one. showing a variety of other insects and arachnids that were killed by different Posters species of fungus. This scene partially inspired the development of The Last of Us, but does that mean? Surely not. Could the infection exist in real life? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had so much fun producing this, and I do really enjoy making these iceberg videos, but they take so long to make that I can't pump them out all the time. This script alone has taken me four hours to research, compose, and then make the final amendments. And I don't even know how long it's going to take me to edit this video yet. So if you guys could just scroll down below and just double check you are subscribed, it does really, really help me out. And it really gives me the motivation to keep producing videos for you guys. Also, while you're down there, come and check out my socials. I do all sorts of things on Twitter, Instagram, everything. So come and check me down out down below. And I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.